Hello, everybody. This is the Abbott's address for Friday, May 1st. So somebody asked, um, okay, so you say you're an Abbott and yet you have a wedding ring on. So how can you be an Abbott and be married? So that's a good question, right? An Abbott is kind of a, it's a monastic term as far as we usually hear it in the West. In the West, Abbott means the head of a monastery. And of course, it kind of has that connotation in the East as well. Um, but not just exclusively, you know, the way it's worked out in the Zen tradition, uh, as far as I've seen it, um, they're the head of a temple is referred to as an abbot. And so whereas in the West, we think of that as being exclusively monastic term and in the way it's used in Zen, it's, it means the head of a temple also, as well as the head of a, a monastery. So, so personally, um, I have full uh, transmission in the Soto line through James Ford and G.U. Kennett and so on. So I'm fully ordained um, and I'm a priest and I'm an abbot, but I would never self-identify as a monastic. So I'm, I don't I don't go around saying I'm a monk. I'm not a monk. I've got a, an, a wife who's also ordained and I've got a daughter and a, a day job where I'm a professor of music and a mortgage and all that kind of stuff. So I don't I wouldn't say I'm monastic, um, but I but I would say I'm ordained. So Priest makes sense, whereas monastic does not. And that's not a universal. I mean, there are definitely um, people in other lineages of Zen practice that would um, use the term monk, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, for me, monastic means um, like it does in the West. It would mean for me probably celibate and um, not having any possessions and living in community in a cloistered setting. I mean, to me, when I think of a monastic, that's what I think of. Um, so, you know, I'm not that. Now, there's room for that, to be sure. Uh, you know, that, that, that kind of practice, um, that's a very intense practice, a very beautiful practice, and I think it was the crucible that held the tradition through history. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> even um, the fact of my being able to be married and to be ordained has something to do with the historical accident of the lineage that I'm in, which is Japanese and its heritage before China and before India. And, you know, it was somewhere around the Meiji era and the reform that, that it was decided that priests could marry. Uh, and I've heard it told that that was a, an attempt to kind of crush the priesthood and destroy it of its um, credibility, figuring that, you know, in a few generations it will just go away if we let them get married, you know. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard it said that way, um, and it didn't work. You know, it totally didn't work. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the wider Buddhist community, um, there are monastics in other traditions. There are ordained people in other traditions, so like the Theravadan tradition, perhaps, or for sure, uh, <clears throat> most of the Tibetan traditions that I'm aware of. To be ordained is to be monastic, and it's their equivalent terms. So they would find me self-identifying as ordained and also being married to be a scandal. Um, this breaks the Vinaya, and this is not the code of the Buddha. Um, however, it's the tradition of the Japanese lineage and the Bodhisattva ordination, we call it. So, um, you know, what's uh, orthodox to one is scandal to the next or whatever, it's fine. I mean, to me, it's fine. I think all those forms of practice are, are beautiful and have their place. And I think there are people to whom uh, that they're perfectly suited for that. There are some hybrid versions. There are some mon monasteries in America where um, monastics can have a primary relationship, can, have, can be married but not have kids. Okay, so that's, you know, it gets a little funny to me. It's a little weird to me. I, I wouldn't imagine myself wanting to try to negotiate that kind of thing if I ever had a residential community someday or something like that. That's, I don't know, it seems weird. But whatever. I mean, we're all trying to figure this out. Maybe it's a good call for some people. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a priest, but I'm not a monk. And what that means is I serve a community. And um, what's the priest part about? Uh, well, it has to do with being vowed. So in other words, I have a vow to be there. So um, other circumstances come and go and people come and go and all kinds of things. But um, what I see part of my priestly vow is to make sure that I'm there no matter what, no matter what goes on, 
what is in or out of favor or, or fad or popularity or lack thereof, it doesn't matter, uh, I'm there. And so that's part of the, the, the vow of the priesthood in my view. So, um, so there, there we are, that's a little bit of an answer. How can you be an abbot and be married? Interesting, isn't it, how these standards uh, change over time. So in other news, <coughs> um, for our community here, there's, there's a lot coming up in May. We have a Zazenkai uh, on the 9th, which is a day-long uh, retreat at the temple. And then we have our Ongo closing session, and that goes from May 14th to the 17th. And then the Ongo closing ceremony is on the 17th. Uh, and then uh, Jakai formation classes start. The first uh, of those is going to be on May 30th, which is a day-long retreat at the temple. So uh, parenthetically, if you're interested in receiving the precepts and we haven't yet had the conversation, uh, let's do that um, before that May 30th date because that's, you know, we, we, we need the, all the initiates to go through the full formation program to make sure it's what it needs to be. Okay, thank you for your practice, everybody. We'll see you in the Zendo.